Okay, this tutorial is covering how to draw small, uh, single central atom Lewis structures. And for the most part, Lewis structures that obey the octet rule. And we'll go into a more um, like systematic way to draw Lewis structures um, when we get to our, our bonding unit. Okay, so um, first of all, a little bit of a uh, little bit of background: ionic versus covalent. Um, so ionic compounds are so let's draw a quick periodic table and ionic compounds so here's our staircase and ionic compounds are when you have a, a non-metal bonded to a metal uh, so in this tutorial and the next several days probably in class um, you're not going to see metal to non-metal we don't you don't draw co you don't draw lewis structures for ionic compounds so one thing to notice is uh all the all the molecules you'll see the next few days in class are going to be a non-metal bonded to more non-metals and a very important exception is hydrogen this is a non-metal okay so <clears throat> you'll see stuff like CH4 methane gas carbon is right here this is a nonmetal and hydrogen is a nonmetal okay you'll see stuff like um um i don't know even let's say like you'll see like huge molecules so covalent molecules could be like huge molecules so you'll see um like uh um uh, decane so CH10 uh, and then it's it'd be 20, 22, so decane. So this is covalent, okay? Um, even something like this, we have phosphorus, which is around here, and oxygen, which is around here. Okay, so this is these are a bunch of nonmetals. Okay, so you're going to see stuff like this. Um, and then we're, we won't go into Lewis structures of, you know, more complicated things until a little bit later. Okay, so we're going to stick to molecules that have like one central atom. Okay, so then, and also we have a metallic bonding, and metallic bonding is like an alloy. So if you play a musical instrument, you um, most most of them are made out of brass. So the so brass is uh, mainly copper, and it's melted together with zinc. So um, what happens in an alloy is the metals lose their electrons, and then they and then. Uh, they share all those electrons that they've lost. So it's like a bu bunch of, it's like a sea of electrons and they whiz throughout the material, which is why they, uh, so we say the electrons are delocalized. Delocalized meaning they don't have like a home that they stick to or like a home atom that they kind of hover around. They, they just kind of like whiz through the material. So this is why a lot of metals, especially copper, is used for uh, conduction. So they have free moving electrons going through the material. So this is a real quick side note on metallic bonding um, in case you've seen um, alloys. So uh, we, we have much more on that when we get to our uh, structure and bonding unit a little bit later in the year. All right, so you'll see this um, either passed out in class or as an attachment. And uh, so let me, let me explain what you're seeing here. So um, these are the number of valence electrons um, for each column. So two, so one A has one valence electron. Two A has two valence. Three A has three valence. Four A has four valence. Five A has five valence. An important point about five A is here you see the the valence electron forms a pair, and the most that can occupy one side on a Lewis structure of an of an element is two, and we call this a lone pair. It's a lone pair, or or that's one term for it, or it could also be called unshared pair. And if you have an element, these single dots are available for pairing to match um, another single dot for covalent bonding, match another single uh, electron on another element. So, but once they pair up like this, then it doesn't have, so for example, nitrogen is uh, the most common covalent bonding atom for
from 5a. So nitrogen has one unshared pair and three single dots, and it will use it can use these three to form dashes, okay, or uh, or bonds with another element, okay, that also has a single dot. Okay, so um, 6a, I'm going to have to erase what I wrote here. So 6a has, you'll see that it has two unshared pairs or two lone pairs and two dots available for bonding. Okay, and then 7a, the halogens, they have, they can only make one dash because they only have one single dot here. Okay, and, and they have uh, three unshared pairs. So these have important significance for, uh, for chemical reactivity. Uh, but they don't make covalent bonds, okay? They can in uh, when they, when we get to like octet exceptions, you'll see that they that they can in fact make covalent bonds. But for the most part, you'll see that they won't. Halogens make one dash, so these single dots correspond to how many dashes that column can make. Okay, so underneath these underneath these, you'll see that um, these make so column 1a will make um, one dash and it looks like that when it makes a when they make bonds um, and they don't have any unshared pairs or lone pairs okay 2a has two dashes you'll rarely see 2a make covalent bonds um, but when it does it would look like that and no unshared pairs 3a can make three dashes 4a can make four dashes. Um, and you could actually, so here's where it gets interesting when you get to 4a. So carbon can have four singles, four single bonds. Carbon can also have a double. So it can do four dashes. It could do a double. So it can do a double and two singles four, or four singles. Another formation is it could do two double bonds, okay, one on each side. And or carbon, you'll see it do this too. It can do a triple and a single. So all of these uh, formations all, all show four dashes that carbon can do. Okay, and again, it has zero unsure. So all its dots, all its valence, it uses for bonding. Um, when we get to 5a, you'll see that nitrogen will have this unshared pair. It doesn't make dashes. So notice I, I kind of rotated. And it doesn't matter where you put the bond. So like this right here is the same as this. It doesn't really, it's arbitrary where you put that dash. So molecules are 3D. They don't really have like a, a set like uh, um, way that they look. As long as you have three singles and one unshared pair, then you've represented how nitrogen will do its dashes. Um, nitrogen can also do two, a double and one single. And there's one other formation it might look like. Nitrogen might look like this, a, a triple bond. Okay, so in fact on... Uh, and this, and here's where we get to our, our unshared pairs. Okay, so 6a, 6a will have um, two dashes it can make. Um, it'll do two singles. Most commonly, you'll see oxygen just does two singles or one double. Okay, and then the halogens have one dash that they can make. Okay, and that's it. That's all that they can do. So halogens, when you see them, see them in the covalent bonding. They make one dash with three unshared pairs. Okay, three unshared pairs. Okay, here's a summary of shapes. So once we figure out the central atom, you can figure out what shape the molecule is going to make. And this is better explained when we start looking at examples. But just a, just a quick overview. If you see 1a making a single dash, it will be linear. That's going to be the shape. Um, 2a which again is really rare that you'll see 2A involved in covalent bonding because these are metals. And these, you won't see, typically you won't see these too often. Okay, but hydrogen you see all the time because this is a non-metal. So it's important to know 1A, um, hydrogen particularly. Um, but column two you won't see make covalent bonds very often. 3A is also pretty rare, but when it does, it makes what's called a trigonal planar so so 3a can make three dashes and they're spaced equally apart okay and it makes a 120 degree bond angles 120 degree um, 4a makes a shape called a tetrahedral and this dash right there it means that this atom is pointing away from us and this cone right here 
means that this atom is popping out of the screen towards us. So it's, it's trying to show three dimensions, this drawing, by using that dash and the cone. Okay, so that's called a tetrahedral 4A. 5A is called a trigonal pyramidal shape. 6A makes, um, and the most common example for 6A is when, when um, you have H2O. So oxygen is in 6A, that's your central atom, and it makes a bent shape. The two hydrogens, so those two H's, point like that. And 6A has two bonded and two unshared or lone pairs. So um, we say 6A, and typically oxygen, if oxygen is the central atom, will make a bent shape. And 7A will do linear, since it can only do one dash. Okay, like hydrochloric acid, for instance, is just HCl. Okay, and then you'll see that uh, the, the chlorine and then the hydrogen, so it's kind of like a combination of 7A and 1A. It makes a, a linear shape. Okay, and then noble gases are usually not involved in bonding. If you put some of these lower ones under high pressure, you could actually get them to bond, but that's uh, we'll save that for when we get to the bonding unit. Okay. Um, okay, so there's a there's a rule for dashes. It's called the Honk rule. Okay, um, typically you'll see hydrogen makes one dash. It's kind of a mnemonic. Like uh, I used to remember it going. Uh, you just I don't know. It sounds funny. Like the word honk, and when you write H O N C, it makes you say honk. And then um, it's a way to get the order correct. Hydrogen makes one dash. Oxygen makes two. Nitrogen makes three, and carbon makes four dashes. Okay, so let's um, let's do a couple practice Lewis structures, and what we're going to do is draw the dot structure first, um, and then we'll see how they combine. So group number and shape. This is in this is from seven A. So this is going to make if we go back to our bonding slide, seven um, A makes a linear shape. So let's go to. Oh, let's go to um, this one. So this makes a linear shape. And I'm going to draw the Lewis dot for each bromine. So it looks like we have two bromines. So here's one. Okay, and I'll draw out each one. And it doesn't matter where we put that single dot. I'm going to make them face each other because I know those are the ones that are going to form the bond. So, And then what I like to do is draw a circle around the two bonding electrons. So the dot structure, so this will make this um, molecule, Br2. So this, this is the bonded pair. Okay, and I'm going to draw it like, like this. Okay, and then structural formula, and here's where we want to draw the correct shape. Instead of showing that, we're going to replace it with a dash. And it says to show all the, um, also you should show all the uh, unshared pairs. So all these double dots or lone pairs, they stay here. Okay, so our next example, um, out of all of these, the central atom is typically written first. So the central atom... is usually written first. Okay, so on this molecule, it's carbon. And you could tell carbon's a central atom because it has the most single dots. So carbon is in 4A. And if we go back to um, if we go back to our uh, summary here, our, our summary of shapes, um, we see that carbon is in is in 4A, so this is going to make a tetrahedral shape. So let's go back to our practice slide. Okay, so Okay, so carbon makes a tetrahedral, 
And uh, it, it's not going to matter where you put the H's or the BR. So we'll have carbon here. And we'll draw this out. Okay, and we have two H's. So I'm going to draw each individual H and then each individual BR. So BR looks like this. And I'll make another BR. This is just scratch work. If you already know how, the, how it connects, you could go straight to the dot structure. So this will pair with that. And it doesn't matter where you pair the single dots, just as long as you realize that these are the ones that pair. So notice the halogens and hydrogen. They, they can make one dash. So these guys typically will bond onto the carbon. So our dot structure will look like this. Okay, hydrogen looks like that. That, and then the bromine looks like this. And then we have another bromine. And we'll put it here. Okay. And now we're going to make our structural formula. And we're going we're gonna to draw the correct shape. So tetrahedral, use the uh, summary uh, paper that goes along with this as a, as a uh, template to see how the shape goes. So a tetrahedral looks like this. Okay. I usually draw it like that. Okay. And then um, we put the H's here and the BR's go here. Okay, um, now NF3 is in 5A, the central atom, so nitrogen is from 5A. And if we go back to that paper and look and see what shape 5A makes, it's called a trigonal pyramidal shape. Okay, and it would look like this. So your nitrogen uh, has three single dots and an unshared pair, and then the fluorine looks like this. So we have three fluorines. Okay, and these are all going to bond to these single dots. Okay, and so we'll show it the dot structure is you show all the bonding. So the dot structure, the disadvantage is it doesn't show the correct shape but it shows clearly that you have two electrons making the bonds. And you could clearly see that every atom here is obeying, is filling their octet. So there's eight electrons around this. There's eight since nitrogen shared with three other atoms. It now has eight. It used to have five valence, now it has eight. Okay, and likewise with the other fluorines. So now if we use, use the molecular uh, shape summary paper, and use and the trigonal pl trigonal pyramidal ends up looking like this. The nitrogen goes like that, and then we draw the the bond angles about like that. Okay, and make sure you put the add that lone pair there. And we just we draw the correct shape and replace the bonded electrons these with dashes. Okay, and that's our um, that's a trigonal pyramidal. Okay, so why don't you guys try the the last one here on this on the slide um, CH4 methane okay and then uh, let's see what you get for central atom the drawing and the um, and the correct shape